Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Without Context podcast. We are joined by the usual hosts. We have Rift Duck, Anxiety Lasagna, Degavolti, and Skybreaker. And as you, if you've watched the previous two episodes, I am Sharky Hat. And we're still kind of figuring out this podcast. Uh, but I guess the way that we can sum it up is this is just a podcast about our favorite hobbies. Whether it be and if you... games, D and D, uh, entertainment, anything like that, just whatever we feel like talking about this week. Right, and if you haven't watched the previous two episodes, shame on you. So aggressive. <laughs> also, who starts on episode three? Like, like what's there's wrong one and Go two. Back. Go. Go. They're back. they're really good. Honestly. <laughs> The reason we did this intro where I introduced anybody is because we told you who we were in the pe- previous two. It's continuity. You have to go back and watch the first two movies <laughs> before you understand what's going on in the third. Who starts MCU on Infinity War? Like, what's wrong with you? Go. <laughs> but, uh... So, oh, uh, uh today's Haley episode... Dissociate. Yeah, <laughs> Haley dissociated there for a second. <laughs> I was thinking about Infinity War. <laughs> oh, no. That's usually what happens. So we've covered uh, two out of pretty much the three topics that I think we set out when we started this podcast. Uh, We talked about D&D in episode one. We've talked about some video games in episode two. And now we're going to talk about some uh, pop culture and entertainment. Uh, To my recollection, because I don't have the Discord chat in front of me, uh, the episode for today, we're going to talk about our favorite cartoons growing up that we feel are maybe under the radar, a little underappreciated. And just kind of shows that, like, we feel never really got there to do. So, I'm going to take over, so we're going to do this different. We're going to start from Decca at the top. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, who here likes street sharks? Oh, oh dear, my God. Yes. <laughs> is- it's like, Decca, what do you mean? <laughs> like- <laughs> she has a shark, and you're literally sharky hat. The name. <laughs> and she, uh, yeah, so, she, she has the IKEA shark. <laughs> his name is Ike. Ike, Ike from IKEA. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Street Sharks was a a an animated series that ran from 1984 to 1997 as part of oh god, uh, Bobot's Amazing Adventures programming block. If anyone remembers that from way back in the day, dude, I was um, like six. I didn't know. I didn't know animation companies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the 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 concept of Street Sharks is uh, a professor named Dr. Robert Bolton and his partner, Dr. Luther Paradigm, made a machine called this very 90s machine called a Gene Slammer. <laughs> to be fair, not a Gene science, Splicer. To be fair, that we need scientists to name their stuff more fun. Like, we need to start naming sure. pieces of technology more, you know, entertainingly. Because this is the so, MX620. Gene, Gene Slammer. Gene Slammer sounds so much better. Kind of tells what you what it like. does there. Yeah. Kind of tells you what it does. Just slam Gene Simmons right in the. No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, now he's going to sue us. I'm going to let Decker continue here because I have a lot to say about this show. All right. So. <laughs> um, the main characters in this are. Uh, the titular street sharks, uh, Ripster, Jab, Streaks, and Big Slamu. Uh, Slamu. And they are they, yeah. Uh, they're all. This is this is the this is. I don't get very nostalgic about animated shows, but Street Sharks is the one I do. I I remember I had. Uh, I can't remember which one was the blue one. Um, but but. The blue tell one. Me which one it wasn't? Yeah, it was not big slam. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> um, but I had the big blue one. It was like there was like an action figure that was like that big, and it, the the mouth opened up really wide. I'm looking on um, wide enough, you could Google. jam another action figure in there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking on Google, and I think you're thinking of Ripster. He's like the sol- He's like the great white, like the solid yeah. Blue, like, yeah, great yeah, white yeah. shark. Yeah. Um, oh, the show looks so bad now. Looking at it, these it does. <laughs> um, there is also a character in this show named Moby Lick. 
I'm not making that up. Look it up. Because they didn't want to put the word dick in a children's show. Correct. Because yeah, lick is so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I Moby get a uh, dick. Moby lick? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. You may not. Um, Fair enough. And I think um, it was just like in that that era of like 90s shows that like because you had like x-men and then you had pokemon when pokemon came out and then you had like the other major properties but then you also had the ones that are just anthropomorphic animals doing stuff like yeah, samurai a... pizza cats and all of that stuff yeah that's the point i want to touch on this is like definitely one of the shows that fell into like that five-year span trying to capitalize on like ninja turtles mm-hmm where you had just all these different shows, uh, Biker Mice from Mars, you had Street yep. Shark, you had all these things about just anthropomorphic characters. Like, these can be like Ninja Turtles, right? If we make them cool. Yeah. And then it had Everyone... a toy line, so... This was actually one of the line. shows... I had a toy. This was one of the shows that was made to promote toys. Like, it wasn't the show was made and then toys were made. It was, hey, we're making these toys. We're gonna make this show so people are interested, and somehow they got three years out of it, so... They did, hey, props to them. They got a good one. Um, actually, after uh, after in 1996, uh, the Street Sharks were paired with another toy made for an animated show called the Dino Avengers, and the show was retitled Dino Avengers featuring Street Sharks. I don't know shit about Dino Avengers. Don't ask me about it's, it. It's <laughs> it's the same thing except it's dinosaurs. Like it's not shark. It's uh, according to the Wikipedia page, uh, it starred a Tyrannosaurus, a Triceratops, a Stegosaurus, and a Pterodon. They were transformed into super warriors by an interdimensional criminal. So, yeah, that definitely the life has goals, the, uh, honestly. That that honestly fits into the whole you know TMNT kind of feel. Can I have my uh, face? Uh, no, absolutely not. Guess not. Um, I, I it definitely fits into like the nineties, like what's cool sharks and dinosaurs, like, mm-hmm. like every nineties boy wet dream. They oh, yeah. weren't wrong. Uh, everybody, they everybody, were, everybody had a, everybody had a dinosaur a raccoon and give it a laser. There we go. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that show exists. And I was thinking, what's the one where it's like, the, it, I think they're like brothers. They're like the two brothers are cats and they have motorcycles. SWAT cats. That was my runner up, but I could not think of the name of that show. Um but yeah, Thanks. that just goes to show just the sheer volume of like shows in the 90s that were anthropomorphic animals. Um Dude, and not all not all of them aged well. In fact, most of them did not. Talking all about of these the were so... actually made to promote battle toads. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about this so like this is definitely like when I was from the last episode, when I was done playing Zombies Ate My Neighbors these were the shows that I turned on. <laughs> like, oh, so yeah, we are like, game. we are firmly in the 90s at this point on the podcast. Saturday we are all morning. 90s oh, children. Boy. See, the um, thing for me is, was like, dinosaurs are sort of the big thing, but like, the superior dinosaur show was clearly Transformers Beast Wars. But Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Do not tell Lux that. <laughs> all right, we, have a friend Lux. That, we have a friend who will... Uh, who will talk about some B swords? <laughs> they will die on this hill. They will die on this hill. Um, yeah, Street Sharks is just like one of those shows that I I remember this one vividly versus like uh, SWAT Cats that I didn't even remember the name of, or like Ninja Turtles. Of course, everyone loved Ninja Turtles, so it was, it was a major property. Um, it was the, it was like the midpoint between those two, where I can't remember the name of the show and uh, major property. It, Street Sharks is like right in the middle, and I think that's why I picked it. And, like, if you ask people nowadays, yeah, sure, everyone loves Street Sharks because the people who didn't like it don't know what it is. And they, right. don't, have a neg- they don't have a negative opinion on it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my pick. Any questions about it? No, I, I don't was... know. It's pretty... Yeah. Oh. You can go on. You can go on. I was making no, noise. I was just saying, like, it's one of those shows that I, I never got into, but I just sort of watched because it was, like, on. Oh, um, because it's like ooh shiny colors, like and it's like sharks. Who doesn't fucking love sharks? I'm a boy. Sharks are fucking awesome. Like shark <laughs> games on motorcycles. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. But, uh, uh, well, yeah. But... I was looking at uh, your props, SWAT cats. That reminded me they were doing 
a reboot of that or like a revival to like actually finish the series. And I looked mm-hmm. it up, and it was like, oh, they're just having a network. They're having a hard time finding a network to commit to bringing it back. So no. it's like they're still hoping. It's like we're going to make it. It's just we're trying to find somebody who will actually let us put it on, like their service. Damn you, AAA title. Damn you, AAA. But uh, put it on Disney Plus. Jesus Christ. There's a memory for the Street Sharks, and it wasn't even watching the show. It was my f- my old roommate brought home the complete series box set because he was just in a store. And he saw it on the shelf. It was like the last one. It was just Street Sharks, all three like seasons. And he brought it home, and it was like, a, "Anybody want to watch Street Sharks with me?" And like all of us, <laughs> like ran into the living room <laughs> to sit down and watch it. The Bonobo movie night. Yeah, just the, <laughs> the like seven me and like my six roommates just watching Street Sharks, and we're like, "Fuck, this show is bad." <laughs> <laughs> it did not age well. Uh, no, it did not. Oh, wow. It's a good pick. Like, it I is a solid the pick. Definitely, I would say it's definitely like a little underrated, but also yeah, I, because it didn't age well. Yeah, I, that's that's the thing. I don't think it was like severely underrated. I think people liked it enough to buy toys. I guess, and I, I think that's where you really gauge the ratings for these shows. Like, how many yeah, toys did that it was did just, sell? That was just the thing. Like, is it selling a lot of toys? So yeah, we'll keep it going. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, yeah, good pick. So let's move on to Haley. Oh god. Um. So I went through. I uh, during the time where everyone was watching like cool '90s stuff, I was watching like Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles because I was like basic as hell. Uh, Pokemon, all that kind of stuff. Uh, late '90s was like a big SpongeBob human because I'm real basic. Uh, yeah, like and if... I went through a bunch of ones in my head of like what were the shows that I watched when like something on Nickelodeon was on that I didn't like or when like and the first one that came to mind was Codename Kids Next Door. Yes. And one of my favorites. I, I I don't know if it's underrated or not. I just loved that show and I like think... the idea of it. Go ahead. I think compared to other uh, Cartoon Network shows at the time, it definitely falls like lower on the list. I think, like, if you ask, like, for classic, like, Cartoon Network shows, it'll be, like, Dexter, Powerpuff Girls, Ed, Ed, Eddie, Courage would be, like, your top four, like, all the time for most people. I I got more into Cartoon Network during the, like, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Uh, Was Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends on Cartoon Network? Yeah, and and Kids Next Door. Those were my shows, because, like, I also liked Chalk Zone on Nickelodeon. Yes! Fucking Dude, so no lie, Nickelodeon's doing their like Smash Brothers style fighting game. Oh yes, and I think that they confirmed that one of the characters from Chalk Zone is in it. So I was like, Everybody oh, they're remembering the classics. <laughs> like, yeah. Rudy Patootie. Rudy Patootie. But Conan Kiss Next Door. I loved that show because. It seemed like in every other cartoon, like the girl character was like one of a few stereotypes and all the girls in that show felt like there was like a little bit more to them than just like, oh, like I'll use Power Rangers, for example, like the boys got to be like red and blue. And then the girls are like yellow and pink. And I was like, I want to be the red one or I want to be whatever (laughs) one where like number three was kind of like a ditz, but she was like, could be badass when like she really needed to. And of course, the the romance of plot between number three and number four. Yum, yum, it yum, had yum. good. Really it had good. Ca- it had good care. It actually, and the thing is, like compared to other shows, it actually had like plots that continued going. Mm-hmm. Like most yes. stuff would be dropped after an episode, but like their romance, their like crush on each other, like kept going, and like they kept then, building off like previous episodes and other and stuff like, too. The characters aged like that was a huge factor of it where like it was heartbreaking when like a character you liked became a teenager and had to be decommissioned that was like i remember they did the episode where like people were getting decommissioned and i was like hysterical and i that was, was like the movie i think right like yeah something I think like that so. yeah with the moon base and everything yeah, yeah. they like yeah. did the full like movie where it like went to like full-blown war between the kids next door like organization and the village and the delightful children from down the lane were like hilarious and like 
acronyms. Like I thought oh. the acronym humor was really funny. The they acronyms a, were perfect. They even made it a point to like introduce like the thing with the acronym and acronym. Like, and then yeah. they like and honestly, like it expanded my vocabulary at times with that. And I was able to like bond with my dad because I'd be like, oh yeah, and they have their two by four technology. And he's like, here's some real two by four technology. And we'd go like <laughs> build stuff in the garage. <laughs> And it was just fun and not, it didn't feel like, like a brain rot kind of kid show. So like my parents didn't really care when I watched it. Well, my mom didn't care. My dad didn't care what I did ever. Um, but if I just, I don't know if it's underrated or not, but it's one of my top shows and I think about it all the time. I agree with you. I don't know if it's underrated, but it's definitely overshadowed by like the big like Johnny Bravo and like all the other like Cartoon Network classic like Samurai Jack and stuff like that. But nice to look at. Like my main issue with a lot of the like classic uh, Cartoon Network shows, like Ed and Eddie and Courage specifically, I couldn't watch them because for me they were just ugly to look at. And I understand that like the art style is part of the storytelling, yeah. and like Courage too scary for me. <laughs> Ed and Eddie, it was just the art style where I was just like the wiggly that line, line was so constantly mean. moving. And they were just mean. I thought that I thought the minus double D. Well, I guess Eddie. Eddie was very mean. And I didn't like that he was mean to his friends, like mean to all the people in his neighborhood, because like he had this neighborhood full of kids and there's no kids in my neighborhood. So I was like, why are you being mean to your friends? <laughs> I, I feel like on that show I probably related the most to Jimmy, the one with Blank. <laughs> Uh, so that's why i was always just, john johnny johnny, johnny. 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 there jimmy was a jimmy was the, that's I mean, johnny. jimmy jimmy was the one with the big like brace like around his head right yeah all right yeah. well but may, yeah whichever one had the brace where it was just like he was just kind of like the like softer the timid like, kid the timid the, kid that was, and I was just like the if anyone harmed that child i was enraged even as a kid i was like and aside from like cat Aside from like Kevin, uh, Johnny was like the only one to like really go up against the Eds too in like episodes. And Rolf, Rolf would go Rolf. up against them too. Rolf yeah. is an icon though. <laughs> Rolf is an immigrant icon. I, say, I feel like I can't do an impression because I don't want to come off as insensitive because like Rolf is the king. He's an icon. I like... his insults. Oh, unparalleled. Your gardens are overgrown <laughs> and your vegetables are soft. You son of a shepherd. <laughs> Plus, he's isn't like, he like the voice actor for Goku? I mm -hmm. think so. Oh I think my he, god. I think he's Is the he voice really? actor for it's American Goku in Dragon Ball Z. Oh but to be fair though, it's like that. it's the same mentality. Like right. And I think Rolf is the only one in the show to actually like throw hands with almost everybody and win the three shot oh, beating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Rolf, but... Rolf, I would not want to face Rolf. Like Rolf threw hands. <laughs> like yeah. he was it was on site Rolf most of the time. So. But yeah, have we did we all watch Conan Kids Next Door? I did. Yeah, yeah. Was... I did. I, was... I my favorite operative, like number three. I, I feel like I really I love her. to number three. Because, like, she was a little bit more, like, softer and girlier. And, like, that was something I didn't allow myself to be as a kid. Because I was like, no, I, I hang out with the boys. Girl stuff's dumb. Meanwhile, I had, like, Barbie games on my computer. Like, Barbie horse riding adventure all day, every day. And I <laughs> just be like, I'm like, see, she can do girly stuff. And it's still, like, a secret agent. And that was the coolest. And I thought yeah. number four was great because I stand number three. See, I had next? that. I have that, but the exact opposite. Like, Wallaby, amazing. Loved him. Number four was great. Absolutely had a crush on number three as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> how it goes. That's valid. That's valid. Yes. Um, I think my favorite operative was, I, I'm going to say number one. I'm just, I, I appreciate Nigel a good leader. Uno. Number one. I too appreciate two. kid, I too appreciate kid Picard. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> got the red shirt, red and, everything. shirt and everything. <laughs> Sharky wore the wrong shirt, but he's actually working towards a Nigel Uno cosplay. He's got the <laughs> hair down already. That's fair. He, he I was a uh, Nigel I was... Uno after he's just decommissioned. <laughs> oh, heartbreak! If yeah, you're listening right? on, if you're only listening to us on Spotify, by the way, I did shave my head between episodes one and two. So. <laughs> They've made it a point to do the SpongeBob bald, 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 bald. bald. <laughs> my eyes. 
I was a I was a number two kind of guy. I I was a Hoagie Gilligan Junior. Like <laughs> I because he was Jr. he was like the tech guy, and I thought the tech guy was always cool. He was like the Q, you know. He made the fun acronyms. He made like the the rocket launchers or whatever. So I thought he was cool, and I liked his like hat like aviation hat goggles kind of yeah. like whole thing he was going on Careful. i thought it was that cool was as hell cool. but yeah number two was my 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 dude i learned about speaking in like the third per like the third person perspective from code name kids next door because <laughs> number five always speaks in the third person <laughs> <coughs> i love number five too though she was oh, fantastic was so happy gay all the weekend I, this is how I know you guys love the show because you remember the names. I don't remember the names. <laughs> I remember the characters. I don't remember their numbers or their names though. Like I can tell you, like uh, the sh short Australian kid, the yep. Wallaby. 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 Leader, Wallaby. Yeah, the fact here with the aviation glasses. Like I can tell you, like who they are. I just can't tell you like numbers <laughs> or names because I don't remember that much about it. But so like. Uh. Uh... I thought it was clever. Like later in life, I realized that the person who was in charge of decommissioning was number eighty-six. Oh, yeah. There was like little ten. jokes yep. like that. That's uh, funny. Like, thrown in. And then, I mean, spoilers for I think like the last one of the Codename Kids Next Door movies. If there's more than one, it's spoilers they... at this point. <laughs> I'm just trying to be polite. <laughs> it could <laughs> be. <laughs> When they revealed that like Nigel's dad used to be like a K and D operative, and that like uh, father that, right? was like related to them in some way, like his dad yeah. and father were. Like, they were like brothers. brothers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that it was, was the like... more serious one, and then the dad, his dad, made the kids next door to like. Yeah, he like always made be the kids. moon base. Yeah. yeah. I always, I secretly, when I turned 13, was like, if I was in the kids next door, I would hope that I was one of the ones that, like, didn't have to be decommissioned, would, like, be cool to kids forever. Like, that was, I, I, I was, I was a weird How time flies. a weird adult. How time flies, indeed. But yeah, it's like, name kids next door. Like a if, banana. I gotta find out where, <laughs> if that's streaming anywhere, because now I just want to watch KND. I might know a few websites. I'll show any, you. Uh, so anybody have any questions for Haley? Nah, that's it just brings back memories. Yep. It does. All right, wait. Let's... Now, who is your favorite villain? The, the okay. Dracula, oh, the Dracula who spanked other kids on site. Like that oh man busted it. <laughs> that man. <laughs> that we don't okay. talk about him. That man <laughs> broke into houses to spank <laughs> other people's kids. The man had no <laughs> chill whatsoever. I uh, I like illegal. The delightful was very children illegal. from down the lane. I liked father because, like, I wanted to be a kid's next door, but I feel like my family dynamic was more of the delightful children from down the lane. So, like, I wanted to be like when when they like become unevil for like a minute and they're really cool. And I was like, I I vibe with that. But I also liked the the lunch lady. Wasn't there like an evil? Lunch oh, lady? there was. Yeah, yeah. she no, was like even really bad. Stuffing. The that's what it was. Like, that one. <laughs> that whole musical that song, number. That had a catchy song, and I was, I'm all about that catchy music. Yeah, yeah I'm just going a... through some of the villains now, and there was that, that Dracula wannabe uh, broken entered and spanked children, and they were like, "Yeah, that's fine. We can put that on the show." <laughs> <laughs> like, he was, he, he was a pedophile, right? Count like, is a vampire it, who spanks naughty they're... children. A, a, they were never going to confirm, but I can only feel that it might have been a warning about pedophiles. I, mean, <laughs> I there don't was know. Also, two characters named Mr. Wink and Mr. Fib. Hey, you leave Mr. Yeah. Wink and Mr. Fib alone. I <laughs> we love don't talk them. about them. <laughs> <laughs> With the lifeguard, the adult slim one. Sticky oh. Beard, which I'm learning right Sticky now. Beard. Sticky Beard was voiced by Mark Hamill. Mm hmm. And I'm pretty, right now. I can't remember, but I'm going to guess that at least one person in that show was voiced by Clancy Brown. Because I feel like every I, cartoon... Oh my god, it's so funny you brought up Clancy Brown, because I watched Thor Ragnarok yesterday, and Fiance comes in, and it's right at the end when Surtur's like, spoilers for Ragnarok, yeah. destroying Asgard, and I was like, Mr. Krebs, no! And yeah, he, like, voices, he voices Surtur. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, Connor, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> 
okay, okay, okay. Detroit Become Human anybody? No, cool. But yeah, no. uh, Clancy Brown. I had I've used that like Mr. Krabs no joke a lot. Like he's in uh, Shawshank Redemption. Where yeah, he plays like the... a really terrible prison guard. And yep. we watched it as like a virtual social event during COVID at my school. Why would you and do he, it like, to yourself? Shoots that inmate, and I just put in the chat, Mr. Krabs no. <laughs> I uh I know about Clancy Brown from Highlander because he plays the uh Kurgan and he's mm. fighting uh Christopher Lambert who's playing a Scotsman, but I'm like ninety five percent sure that man is I wanna say Belgian. He's definitely <laughs> I can't, not Scottish. I can't place his I can't place his accent, but I know he's not Scottish. <laughs> but uh Clancy Brown plays like the seven foot tall, like ancient warrior immortal who's hunting him. But, uh, I don't see any Clancy Brown yet, but there's a lot of Tom Kenny. I can imagine Tom Kenny with being D. In Bradley show. Baker, a lot of Tara D. Bradley Strongs. Baker. Yeah, you have your Tara Strong makes a lot of sense. Three summers in there. A you lot. have your um, 2000s Cartoon Network like cast, like yeah. on that show. Tara Strong was like all of t- Cartoon Network. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, but Conan Kids Next Door. Cool. All right, let's move to uh, Charlie Duck. What you got? Uh, so mine is absolutely a throwback to I don't know technically if it's like animated because it was like let's make a show with this mid 90s early 2000s really shitty 3D that we have can I take a guess it, was, it came out in 94 can so I take I'll, a, if I'll you're lead not, with if, that if you're not talking about Code Lyoko you're talking about Reboot I've absolutely talked about reboot. <laughs> <laughs> there was like the three choices for shitty. God, when you said 94, I was like, it's not Code Lyoko. I looked it's at it. It's not Code Lyoko. No. It's reboot. reboot. It tried. It tried. It tried. It was like, let's take all this PC terminology and let's make characters out of them and like, let's make a plot for what's going on inside this computer and we'll make it cool and kids will want to be into technology. Oh, Haley, I, Haley, the, was, Haley, I saw that face. Yeah, I saw that face. And I want to say, Reboot had to sink so 2000 CG could fly. <laughs> somebody I'm had sorry. to. Finn's somebody gone. had to try it. They somebody had to had try to take it. the L there. Somebody, like, the first, the first studio had to take the L, so other studios could win. Yeah. Gives you, we don't. We gives don't you an about. idea that there was a different director for every season of Reboot. <laughs> Well, yeah, they were just like, no, 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 we can save it. No, no, we can save it. It's okay. No, they probably were like, what are these hell monsters? So now I want to see a therapist. They brought it back. One of the best things about Reboot, too, is I think it's it's season two or three uh, where they straight up were just like, yep, this isn't working. (laughs) Didn't they kill Reboot? We'll just redo it. They just rebooted the whole show in the middle of the show. That's wild. They're like, we'll introduce timelines. Somebody dies. They come back to save themselves and other people. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Timey wimey bullshit. <laughs> Honestly. Walk so the MCU could run. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> but yeah, they they straight up uh the, the main character, I think his name was Bob, if I remember right. And he was like this computer defender program. And it's like the end of season one, midway through season two or something. He just straight up dies to the villain. And so this like little kid that's there, that's like the love interest little brother, like lives through this hellscape timeline where the virus takes over the computer and then figures out a way to go back to the past and saves (laughs) Bob. But he's like missing an arm and an eye now. And is like straight up like a battle scarred veteran. It's just like, <laughs> what the hell just happened in the show? This is horrifying. <laughs> Alvin's like looking at the art of it. He's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, a, no, apparently, I'm at- and I learned this by reading Wikipedia, like briefly while we're talking about this. Uh, <laughs> there were two movies made in 2001 for reboot. Uh, and they ended the series on a cliffhanger because the creator hadn't gotten to a point for the ending he wanted, so he hasn't even revealed that ending anywhere yet. Just in case he ever gets the chance to remake it. Yeah, this man's like, fuck you, I'm gonna keep this going. 
<laughs> they did reboot the series back in 2018, and it was picked what? up by Netflix. What? So, I have not. Yeah. I have right, not I seen go. it. I have not seen it on Netflix though. That's like the issue I'm having. It's like this was rebooted and put on Netflix, and I was like, I have not seen um, it. Like, yeah. Netflix? It's called. It's a Canadian. Show. It's a Canadian show. So it was the first ten episodes were released in 2018 worldwide, except for Canada. What? Canada's we're like, no big thanks. Canada must have done country. them so dirty, they were like, no more for you, Canada. Yeah. It's, it's just the only thing like, listen, if you ever up. bring this hellscape back to life, we will personally hunt you down. Seriously? It's just, so they were like, no, the, no, uh, it doesn't exist in Canada. Oh, yep, there it is. It's called Reboot the Guardian Code. There's two seasons of it on Netflix. Oh, Love it. So, wow. it's no live action. It's it. live action and CG, so. Can I just say, Canada did full, uh, T'Challa, we don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, we have to talk about Canada like taking risks, right? Because oh, like, absolutely. reboot is a huge risk. In the '90s, doing CG graphics, huge risk, expensive. And then they, in the was... early 2000s, they did Code Lyoko too, because Code Lyoko was in France. Uh, was it French? I thought it was French. It was French. a French, uh, no, it was it was a French was animation. French. But okay. Canada did Total Drama Island the series. Right. And also 16. a huge risk. Yeah. Yeah. How that I, show I did not realize was... how much they had to like edit those and like censor them for American audiences because they like talk about like explicit stuff. And I mean, I watched a little bit of 16 whenever it came out and I was just like, huh, it's just about teenagers at the mall. Mm -hmm. in America, maybe, but... mm -hmm. Didn't Canada mm -hmm. give us like, one? yeah, this 16 year old literally peeping into dressing rooms, describing the woman to his friend? Like, mm. Oh. Mm, doesn't hold up well. Maybe don't do that. Okay, maybe I don't do that, people who are listening. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, did Canada give us like one of the better shows? And it did. Uh, it gave us the forgotten Canada brought us the uh, forgotten classic straight out of Argentina, uh, Cyber Six. If anybody remembers that show, I got nothing. It's, you it's you a, lost uh, me there, bud. Just it's cricket a cricket uh, sound bites, buddy. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> cricket sound bites. It was in an Argentinian uh, comic book series that they turned into like a short lived uh, animated show. But uh, I forget what the actual like plot was. What's the Wikipedia say? It's pretty much Blade Runner. From what it sounds like, <laughs> it's somebody hunting uh, cyborgs and stuff like that. But I want to say it probably had the first character that was like. Let me see if this is. The only thing I know is like the char the main character was I believe a yeah she was a woman who clearly is a woman like in her hero costume, but during the day she portrays herself as a male teacher during the day. I was vaguely this was, remember this show. This was back in like 91, 93, so like that was way ahead of its time for that kind of yeah. you know, like concept on like a TV show. Um I thought I remembered this right. Reboot had to fail so that Beast Wars Transformers could work. Because that is correct. also a Canadian company. <laughs> that is right. That is a Canadian company. Yeah, it was. It all comes full circle. Run it. <laughs> For reboot. Oh god, I'm looking at like reboot art and it's just like oh, god. It's so bad. I don't know. I'm I'm good. <laughs> this is like Blender 1.0. <laughs> like... yeah, this is like it's underrated and it's going to stay that way for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Street Sharks. It just is... hasn't aged well. <laughs> Not I think all. there is like a fandom for it still. Like I think there is still like a dedicated like fan base to it, especially with the revival, because people have wanted it for there to be a revival. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like more undersung than sure. underappreciated. For proper reasons. <laughs> yeah, for proper Absolutely. reasons. It's does not oof. look good. It... <laughs> oh, it looks bad. I do I know fire behind. I... Do know there was a PS1 game made after it because I own it somewhere, and it was just as rough on PS1 graphics as it was being computer generated for a show. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I 
think the only question anyone could possibly have at this point is why would you ever resurrect this? <laughs> <laughs> there was an audience for it, and so they're going to pay their Netflix subs for it. Take my fifteen dollars that I got from Patreon. Yeah, <laughs> that's where that's where your Patreon money is going, Sharky. Now Netflix sub <laughs> straight to reboot. <laughs> Um, I don't really have much to say about Reboot. I didn't watch it because of the art style. I remember that, like, specifically. Like, every time that show came on, I turned it off. So it changed it to I, something I, else. I also turned it off. I was like, this sucks. Keep me speaking sharks that's again. That's fair. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely fair. Yeah, it's just... Uh, but, like, seeing Wolf. this art, I'm like, God. Wolf. <laughs> Being at it. So if you haven't ever seen Reboot, if you're listening to this on a podcast, please go look up the art just so you can comment how bad it is and join us in this Jeez. hating of the art style. <laughs> it was a choice. It was a choice. And much like many of my life choices, it did not turn out well. <laughs> Damn. Well, Moving on from Reboot. If yeah, Charlie has nothing else to say, let's move on to Alvin. Oh, um, the table. oh man, I had I had a couple things uh, on my mind. Code Lyoko was the first one that kind of like popped in, but um, and then I also had like Challenge Showdown was sort of one, yes. but I don't know if that one's super Showdown. underrated. But I will talk about it because I love it. Um, one of the like it was a good show. It had a good premise. It was like mystical, you know, artifacts. And we gotta save the world from this evil mask spirit lady. Um, I just thought it was what was the guy's name? Jack something, right? The bad uh, guy. The thing is, like, yeah, I can the like teenager that was possessed or something. I confused it... two series because you're saying so, like the artifacts for Shallow Showdown, but my mind instantly brought up the Jackie Chan adventure. And they're very the, similar. The they're Shingu. super similar. Yeah. <laughs> Jack show? Spicer. Texan. Jack Spicer. Jack Spicer and Chase Young were the two. Uh, and then Wuya was the uh, was like the bad like spirit the witch. witch. Yeah. yeah. I had such a crush on Jack Spicer as a kid. See, I think that's why I'm into villains is because of Jack Reeds. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, I loved it because it had, like, the weirdest, like, cast of heroes. You had Clay Bailey, who was, like, 10-gallon hat, Texan. He, his element was Earth, and he was yeehaw. just, like, yeehaw, motherfuckers. He was literally, um, like, let's take this cast of characters and also a Texan. Yeah. <laughs> and they had uh, Raimundo. Mm -hmm. um, he was, like, the sassy Latinx kid. You know, um, his was, was like a, wind. It was like a Power Rangers premise, right? You had just a it, bunch it kind of different of like kids from a bunch of different like walks of life and mm. nationalities, and then you just threw them into crazy kung fu adventures. Yeah, you had Kimiko, who was like the Japanese girl with the rich parents and a technophile. Like that was like her whole thing, and then uh, arguably the most racist character on the show, um, Omi. Omi. He, he was a monk and he was literally yellow. <laughs> like, like I get it, right? It was bad. Like Kimiko uh, was, was Japanese, but she wasn't yellow. But Omi was short, round, bald, a monk, and yellow. Like, come on, guys. I mean, just reading his Wikipedia, it says, as a running gag, Omi routinely confuses idiomatic phrases from simple changes to lacking any resemblance to the original phrase whatsoever. Yeah, and he's spoken and like that. Asian looking accent. At yeah, looking at this, uh, I was correct. Uh, it is a Shingong Wu. I completely forgot what the Jackie Chan Adventures one is. This is the show with Talismans. Shingong Wu. Talismans. Yeah, they had the Talismans, no, yeah. Talismans. If you is have like never that? seen Omi, we will link this picture of him because it is <laughs> rough. It's, it's rough. It's, it's, is that the is that the one where that where that the meme? Oh, the logo. It's the it's the meme of like we're gonna do to you what Omi just said that sentence. Yes. <laughs> yes. <exactly. laughs> God, that's awful. <laughs> it, um, if I remember only... correctly, he's short, the bald mm -hmm. head, and he looks like a stereotypical Shaolin monk. Yes, mm -hmm. but he has like and the yellow skin color. And he's voiced by a white lady. And mm -hmm. he's voiced by Terry Strong. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
but like he was it was great because like it had all the artifacts and all the artifacts were like super cool and like to activate the artifact you had to shout what it fucking was to like activate it like the two-ton tunic was my favorite because it was like it was just like a floppy cloth tunic but if yelled it turned into a t- literal like two-ton like piece a of giant armor stone yeah yeah and like wasn't there wasn't there an episode where like someone goes to activate one of them and because you have to yell the name in order to get it to work didn't someone like clamp a hand over their mouth or something to completely stop it yeah something like that but it was just like it was fun because like everybody got into like wacky little adventures and it was like mystical and magical and the the dragon turned into a like a flying bus or something that they would all ride so it was very like my neighbor totoro but like it's a dragon so Show but three seasons, fifty two yeah, episodes. Yeah, I watched that and Jackie Chan Adventures, and like that was like my big sort of like action phase. I was like really into starting to get into anime and stuff like that. It was. I think the the three that go together were Xiaolin Showdown, uh, Jackie Chan Adventures, and American Dragon Jake Long. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Those were like it was like it was peak. It was like peak asian culture for an asian kid that had like <laughs> no You're getting a really important live action contribution which is wendy Wu homecoming warrior that was Anybody? not i watched it but i didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> i have I a thought it was cool. i have a question for you sky uh Absolutely. skybreaker do you consider this like you like a representation for you being an asian man it's weird because like like Jackie like, Chan Adventures, yes, yeah. Like Jackie Chan Adventures, absolutely. Uh, um, Drake Long, absolutely. This one a little less so, um, just because like the one like major, like one out of like the three major Asian characters in the show is like a, a huge caricature because he's like yellow, he's a monk, he's short, he's round, and then he also like speaks in a really heavy Asian accent. When like the Japanese one and then the um, the master, I think his name's like Master Fung or something, speak perfectly good English. So this one, like growing up, I didn't care so much, but now like as an adult and like with like Asian representation being so serious like now, especially like with like uh, Sang Chi coming out like next week, um, at time of recording at least, um, is uh, is so big now. It it matters a lot more now, but like. I still think it's a good show. It's still entertaining, right? I just don't have to take it as seriously as like the other shows. So, okay, so yes, will be, no. will be out by the time like this episode gets out. Yeah, yeah usually I think it'll come out that we Friday. Kinda make that the, we kind of make these episodes like evergreen, but <laughs> if you're watching this, uh, yeah, this is that's the time frame when this recording yeah, yeah. is. I'm excited but, to see yeah. uh, Shang Chi. Oh, me too. I'm I'm so excited. You have no idea. If I cry, mind your business. All right. Like... <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, we can do that. Like, let's make we'll make that an episode. We'll just sit here, and if we've all seen it in something, we'll just sit here and gush about it. Absolutely. We'll let, we'll, no, no, we'll just let Alvin cry about. We'll it let Alvin gush about. <laughs> Feel your emotions. Yeah, I'm wa- I'm watching it the day it's coming out, like the night before. I'm I already have tickets, so. I'm so excited for you. Hell yeah. But yeah, Shaolin Showdown, even though it's a little racist, I still liked it. Awesome. You're up. Yeah, that was just that was one of the shows that I watched occasionally, but it was like another one of the shows that like I just turned off. It was the art style. I think that got to me. That's the art fair. style is very unique to itself. So it's just one of the shows that's like, eh, I'm not really and just kind of change it to something else but uh that's that's totally fair i do hear uh people talk about it and stuff a lot so it definitely has like a fan base and everything uh the show that i bring to the table today is similar to uh street sharks in that it was a show designed to sell toys specifically the male version of poly pocket toys <laughs> so Back in the uh, back was in the uh, wait, wait, wait. Five, was it the? Uh, can I guess it? You can guess it. I guess yours. I I don't remember what the actual name was, but it was like the cartoon version of Mad Max. 
It was called Mighty Max. Mighty Max. I was close. Oh, uh, we got there. Yeah. Back in the uh back in the ye old days of nineteen ninety three, uh Polly Pocket was a girl's toy that was like a little play set with a tiny little figure. You couldn't really do anything because it had a little indent on the floor where you could stand her. And it was just kind was of more it? like a sit on a shelf kind of thing where each toy set would be a different theme. Go them through the play set. I did. Yeah, you could, but like they have a spot like indented in like the playset to like sit them. Like yeah, if you're not and playing with them. Imagination. Um, I had her stand on furniture. They Damn. made a boys' version of it called Mighty Max. And to some of the show in one sentence, a boy gets a message from an ancient Egyptian owl wizard to put on the magical hat and go to the mini mart. And oh from there sounds like a plot to you deal. And from there, yeah, it goes cool. into a uh, adventure across like time and space. The yeah, I'm looking it, it was at the definitely, toy. It's Man, definitely it's... an episode of the week, each based on like one of the toy sets. Uh, how many seasons does this thing have? Because I'll probably put it in context. Okay, this thing had two seasons. The first season was oh. kind of like an episode by episode thing. Um, the main character Max, voiced by Rob Paulson, who's Yako from Animaniacs. Yeah. Uh-huh. The main villain is Tim Curry. As you uh, do when you're Tim Curry. Playing Skullmaster, who is very obviously, like, if you look at him, just a ripoff of Skeletor. Skeletor, yeah. Um, Max's allies are Virgil, a owl-like humanoid who is the last living Lemurian, because this went into, like, ancient cultures. It's Virgil's stuff. the one who, uh, he was, like, an ancient philosopher, and in Inferno, like, the, the Divine Comedy, he's the one yeah. who Dante chose to, like, guide him. Yeah, so yeah, they well. stole, they took the name, but it's like, yeah. we're going to give it to this uh, Lemurian wizard. Who, Lemuria, very briefly, is an Atlantis-like con- is an Atlantis-like continent that was supposed to exist. And then he has, like, an immortal warrior as, like, a bodyguard. And, like, the immortal, this warrior was, like, Hercules and Thor and Legends. He, it's, like, it's all him. Um, But, yeah, it was just this thing where, like, they just go through all these different like time periods to stop one of Skullmaster's like monsters of the week. And then I think the second season got fucking weird. <laughs> like it started uh doing oh here well generally lighthearted and comical the violence and depiction of violence acts were considered excessive by some viewers. Uh many episodes begin with a depiction of the story's principal monster killing a victim to oh set God. up the story. Uh, but the finale of the show is really what throws me off because wait, I think I know Skull this Ma- one. Skullmaster straight up kills Virgil and Norman, and is about to kill Max before Max uses his magical baseball cap to go back in time to the first episode to set up a new timeline where Virgil remembers everything that happened because of his powers. He's like, "We're going to beat him this time," and then the show ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> he just loops. So it's the same uh, show. Yeah, I remember that. She yeah. just, she yeah. just Polly. She pocket size. She lives in her little clam it's, shell. Yeah. Where's like and a, then it's supernatural with someone dying at the beginning of every episode. Yeah. yeah. Where's the uh thing? So like, I'm gonna like this this notebook of mine. The toys are like half the size of this, mm-hmm. and they made a like forty a twenty how many episodes was it? A forty episode series that soon involved. A dystopian timeline and time travel. <laughs> but, I feel uh, like it was one of I'm those things. Wild is what I'm learning. I like while you guys were watching like time travel and reboot and sharks that live on the cool hip streets. I was watching freaking Rugrats. Like, <laughs> we watched that too, but like life was simple over in you, Rugrats you, land. Do you want to know why guys are fucking weird? I'm learning <laughs> so much. Like I was up here being like. Rugrats and like Hey Arnold and like Hey Arnold Wishbone. had some episodes where it got like deep. Well, oh yeah, but like Wishbone was just like teaching you Arthur. You guys were like, and it's like I'm looking at this traveling space wizards. I'm looking at like this cast, and it's like most of these people have never like I think gone on to do a lot of stuff, or if they have, uh, it's like live action roles. But you have, you know. Tim Curry playing Skullmaster. 
Wait, um, wait I'm have... also on the Wikipedia. He also played Jules Verne in this. Yeah, because it's time. It's yeah. It, it's time. Tra- it's time travel and dimensions and Jules Verne. Yeah, they go back in time because apparently he's dealing with a monster. So, as Jules um, Verne does, apparently. But like, I mean, cast, if you write books about it, you have like Frank Welker, who is mostly known for like uh, Transformers. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty sure he's the Transformers. Uh, he was Fred from the, he was Soundwave, Megatron, Gravitron. So yeah, he was a uh, Transformers. Uh, and I think he also voiced Shao Kahn and Reptile in the Mortal Kombat movie, which is uh, weird. I think so. Very uh, strange. Jim Cummings is in this show. Uh, is, that, is that Winnie the Pooh? He's Scar. Uh, and yes, Winnie the Pooh. Well, he did yeah. some of the singing voice for Scar. He did Beowulf Jeremy in the show, which isn't even like Beowulf? a historical, which isn't even a historical Beowulf figure. That's like a mythical show? figure. <laughs> um, and a it's children's show. Ron Ron Perlman making an appearance in one episode. Like it's such oh a God. weird. I feel like I feel like I need to give you guys like all of you a hug based on these shows. <laughs> like, do you need a hug? Absolutely. Yes. Talking... Uh, <laughs> Good lord. The thing is though, this show I watched this show because I bought the toys before it. Um mm-hmm. back when it was just my older sister and me and my younger sister before my younger or right like as my younger brother was being born. Uh every Friday, every payday Friday, my dad would take us to the toy store. We could all pick out one toy for the two weeks before we come back and get another one the mm-hmm. next paycheck. I love that. I'll and, make it um, last. And I would buy, I was an idiot, and I'd buy these stupid play sets that I'd probably get like 10 minutes of play out of <laughs> to do. And uh, eventually I was like, I'm going to skip this week. I'm going to skip this week. Because then I ended up buying the two like huge play sets that came with them. There was like <laughs> one, it was like a lava skull mountain that opened up and it was like multiple floors. Is it like, it like opened like a book so it had like three different areas to yeah. it? Yeah. And then oh, there was like man. a drag there was like a dragon headed like island one that like the full thing opened up to be like a bunch of different like compartments and stuff like that. I just uh, I feel like the creators of the show was like, all right, we're gonna promote these toys. It's a children's show to sell toys, and then they like got to season two, they're like, We don't know what to do, and things just got like out of hand. It's like we just gotta yeah. start killing people. This, uh, like, I'm on the merchandise section on the Wikipedia. And it says that almost ev- almost all episodes of the TV series were at least based on one of the toy sets. So it's just like there was you get it you get a toy set. A let's say video game made. It is bad. I think uh, <laughs> I think John Tron made a video where he plays it, and God, this game is bad. <laughs> like it, like the hit everything like from a technical standpoint just looks bad like the hit detection on everything like just the general mechanic of the game it was, it was definitely just something to make money from but you this. know what still looked better than reboot it did it, i think you're not wrong <laughs> i think like, anything uh, i do now can still look better than reboot because of that yeah but Ooh. if you go to like mighty max toy line on wikipedia you can see like how stupid and simple these sets were and I was like, every Friday, I'm like, I'm gonna go pick up another one. <laughs> I think like, I had one. Thing I had that. one. Not because, as you mentioned it, yeah, I absolutely had one of these things. I think it was from like McDonald's or some shit. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah uh, that's probably the one I had. There was like the small ones, like the snake one that's on the page. Then they made like the heads. It was like a head of a monster that opened into like a slightly bigger playset. Yeah, and then I think I had one of those. Then they made the ones that were like figures that you could open up to be a playset, but when you put all the pieces back in, it made the full figure again. Mm. So yeah. I was like, "Jeez, there's so much shit." <laughs> These playsets remind me, like the colors and like the art style reminded me remind me of um the the like the boy equivalent of the Easy Bake Oven with like creepy crawlers, where you made like the oh guns. yeah. Oh, um, this. Yeah, this was uh, made by uh, Bluebird Toys. Who I'm looking at their Wikipedia page because I was seeing if this was part of a. Uh... Okay, that's why uh, it was eventually bought out by Mattel. So this 
ties back into Street Sharks because Mattel pretty much made every licensed yep. like toy Barbie. line Mattel of the nineties. Sorry, I was a uh, Hasbro toy stan as a kid. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. I was just the, like, I want this thing. That's mm-hmm. for boys, Haley. Did I have the, to Going from like the Easy Bake Oven to the Queasy Bake Cookerator. <laughs> yeah. Queasy Bake Cookerator. I, Those are words. My, I think we had, I know my older sister had an Easy Bake Oven. And it was mm. something like she made stuff like every weekend like her and my mom i think would sit down and make stuff and uh i think we did have the creepy crawler uh we should make that another podcast topic favorite like childhood toy like, i was just obviously i was just toy. like yeah uh, so i would it's like i would say mighty max but considering that i talked about it in this episode i'll save it because when it wasn't the Mighty Max phase, it was the G.I. Joe phase, the six inch like G.I. Joe <laughs> figures. And then after Save that it was the podcast Sharky. It was... Save it. Save, Save the, the con. <laughs> all right, all right. But uh oh, yeah, it was just do... this meaningless cartoon that was just made to sell toys. It's... And yet somehow oh, ended with double murder of 66 percent of the main cast <laughs> so remember dear listeners when you unnecessarily gender toys and have corporate execs make television shows just to push merchandise it ends in a double homicide <laughs> always <laughs> yeah, like, every time it's just, like, oh, out of my God. it's just like out of nowhere it's like we're gonna kill this random character to set up the episode and then like the se- the series finale is we're gonna kill two out of the three main characters, and then send this guy back in time to do it all over again. Wait a minute, are we sure this wasn't just a D and D game? Oof. The thing is, like, <laughs> I, I made a joke with part. Deco, like Pirates of Dark Water, like all these other like action cartoons growing up. I'm like, there's an influence in all of these somewhere in my D and D games. Yeah, like, all of these shows have had some kind of influence on my D&D. active on purpose or not buried in the the psyche somewhere it comes because up. i'm just looking at this it's like this show had lemuria and atlantis and i'm pretty sure this is the first show that i found out about both of those things and like i'm, gonna, re- I'm, looking into I'm going to help you make lemuria in your world now <laughs> it's just like excuse, excuse me while i make a uh, shaolin showdown campaign <laughs> oh no! Do it. <laughs> we had the uh, well, if, next door campaign. Okay. We'd be fine. A little, yeah, a little aside. We had a, a campaign idea called a. Uh, we had a bunch of them. It was like uh, dungeons and dwarves, where everybody just builds a dwarf character, and it's like a mega dungeon. And then oh. it was like monks and monasteries was another one thrown out, or it's just the party's a bunch of monks going from their school to other schools to beat up people each week. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, it's like this. Sh- I don't remember a damn thing about any of the episodes, but I remember like this kid gets a package, he opens a magic baseball hat, a wizard owl appears, and then they fight Skeletor. Like that's the only thing my mind connected about this show, and I was like, the fuck did I watch as a kid? Yeah, <laughs> like, really, that's just that's just the nineties in a nutshell. Yep. Yeah. It's, Wizards, baseball caps, and Skeletor. Yeah, it's just ridiculous but that's that's mine and that's all i got i've got nothing for you uh, because uh yeah that's the episode that that's the episode your your dennis the danger chicken lore drop of the day is (laughs) uh dennis i don't know if i've covered this before met his demise during the uh tomb of annihilation at the hands of a stinking beholder I know where that. I know exactly what room you're talking about. (laughs) I have had a personal vendetta against beholders ever since. And if you're playing Tomb of Annihilation, I'm sorry, there's a beholder in it. Apparently, (laughs) spoiler Spoiler alert. Tell you where it's it's somewhere in there. But uh, yeah, that was the demise, the temporary uh, demise of our Lord and Savior Dennis, spelled like Denny's, with a Y, the Danger Chicken. The Danger Chicken. That's his full name, Dennis, spelled like Denny's with a Y. So his, his full name is Denny's. Dennis spelled like Denny's. Mm-hmm. Danger Chicken, last name with a Y, all one word. Oh, I was right. Beautiful. The good, and he is the goodest boy. His alignment is goodest boy. 
And to learn more about him, watch episode four. Whenever that comes out. No, 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 no. It'll probably be more drop. More drop. More drop. More drops. It'll probably be uh the next episode will probably be next Friday. So but uh yeah, so I guess that's it. Uh do you guys have any shows that you watched growing up, any cartoons or anything like that that you might feel are underappreciated or haven't been talked about or kind of forgotten by uh people today? You know, drop them in the comments. We honestly are still growing, so we have time to personally interact with you all and like chat with you about this and stuff on all of our social media in the comments and all that. So we definitely want to uh, hear from you. Don't if you don't interact with us, we're just interacting with ourselves and it's just going to keep getting weirder. <laughs> we, we will make this weirder. We, we all collectively have one brain cell. Don't <laughs> let us use it. And like 90% of the time it's in Haley's possession. Cause I was gonna say. the rest of us are just bonobos. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we definitely have uh, the ability to interact with you guys, and we want to hear what people think about the shows and all that, so let us know in the comments on our tw on our Twitter. We have the flow code down in the uh, description, which takes you to everything. If you can follow us on Spotify, subscribe to us on YouTube, definitely appreciate that as well. And, uh, yeah, if nobody else has anything left to say, I guess we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Bye, viewers. We love you. Bye, everybody.